On the phone with me, retired Rear Admiral Jamie Barnett, part of Mission Readiness. They released their report, Too Fat to Fight, a couple of years ago, and now they're getting ready to release a follow-up. Still Too Fat to Fight. Uh, Rear Admiral Barnett, first of all, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Dimitri, thanks for having me. So let's talk uh, a little bit about some of the findings in the new study, Still Too Fat to Fight. 25% of people that come into recruiting centers for any branch of the armed services are overweight and turned away. Is that up or down from when you guys did the report two years ago? Uh, you know, that's probably about constant, but it's still very alarming. Um, and, and number one, let me tell you a little bit about where we come from. I mean, this is 300 retired admirals and generals. We consider ourselves a national security organization. We issued this original report because of another shocking statistic, and that is that according to the Department of Defense, 75% of all young Americans, so between ages 17 and 24, are right. unable to join the military. Uh, one of the reasons is they may not have a high school diploma. Uh, the other reason they may have had some problem with the law or criminal record. But the other one is that they're physically unfit. And of that particular reason, obesity is the leading medical qualifier, disqualifier. And, and that's where we get that one in four Americans is, uh, young, is really just too overweight to enlist. You were part of this very interesting story on CNN. And in fact, that is how I was alerted to the issue. Uh, that featured a woman who was 220 pounds when she went to join, I, I believe, was it the Marines? Yes, I, I believe you're correct, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it, she got turned away at 220 pounds, and rather than say, well, I guess I'm not going to be a Marine, she put her mind to it, dropped 80 pounds, went back and re-enlisted. I would imagine that part of the reason that kids being overweight is such a problem for future military services, a lot of the kids you run into probably don't have her mindset of, well, then I have to drop the weight if I want to join. Most of them, I imagine, come from the mindset of, well, I guess I'll never be a Marine. Well, and you, you know, we may have that, that situation that's out there. We, we as a, a society, uh, are, are getting bigger. We're eating more food. We're not exercising as much. And so what admission readiness we're looking for is, what do we do uh, to to go upstream on that problem. Mm -hmm. So we're not actually waiting until you're walking up to the uh, the recruiter to say, hey, I'd like to join. But actually you have lifelong fitness because what we found out, Demetri, people who show up unfit not to do as well in, in uh, boot camp. They either have more injuries or they're more likely not to complete boot camp. And even when they go into the military, uh, if they've had lifelong uh, kind of overweight, uh, about uh, some percentage of them uh, don't complete their first term enlistment. So we have to discharge about 1200 per year. That costs the American people about 50 to $100 mm. million dollars per year to get new uh, recruits and to train them. So the, the thing that we're trying to concentrate is what, is the big, what could have the biggest impact? And one of the things that we see now is, and this is about the new report, is getting junk food out of our schools and getting physical education back in. And, and the reason it has such a big impact is because we found right. that children can consume up to 50% of their calories each day mm. at school. But it also, right. also costs about $1.1 billion dollars of the defense budget. Now, this is not something that Congress gives the military that's separate to handle uh, medical problems. This is out of the defense budget, $1.1 billion to go for obesity and weight-related illnesses, not only of our, our service members, but also their families. Is it a matter of, is it national security matter because you know, you're putting ill-prepared people out on the battlefield or because money that could be spent better is now going to you know train more people or deal with matters that you didn't have to deal with 10, 20 years ago. It, it actually is the latter. And one of the things I would want to make sure that your your listeners understand is our military is very fit. I mean, we right. have the, the strongest fighting force in the world uh, and, and remain that way. And we're doing great on recruiting right now. But we know as the economy continues to improve that our recruiting may be more difficult. Mm -hmm. And as that happens, if we are getting someone who – has the the smarts, the intellect to operate one of these complex systems, but can't come in because uh, of overweight, then that's a national security problem. We are talking to retired Rear Admiral Jamie Barnett, part of Mission Readiness. They're about to release their new report, Still Too Fat to Fight. So playing, not even devil's advocate here, just just a question of what you would say to someone that would say, well, if there is going to be a problem in the future of having people up to the physical standards to enlist, why not lower the physical standards? 
because we do want to have uh, the, the the best, strongest uh, military force in the world. <laughs> and uh, the fact of the matter is, is that we we can't afford to uh, to lower those standards because it actually endangers our troops and endangers our nation. Right. But what we can do is do the sensible things to make sure that junk food gets out of school and that we get physical education back in. And and here's the thing. We're we're looking forward to the United States Department of Agriculture releasing some updated standards for snack foods and vending machines in schools, mm. scientifically based. Uh, that's what we, we saw uh, last year, a couple of years ago, when they brought out their new standards for the actual school lunches. Now we want to see standards for what are called competitive foods. And I think they're called competitive foods because they compete with those school lunches. Um, and, and one of the things we want to see is, you know, Congress uh, basically last year in the appropriations process designated pizza as, as a vegetable. vegetable right? <laughs> yeah, which is cr- crazy because it's got a couple of um, uh, teaspoons of uh, sugary tomato paste on it. They, they call that a vegetable now. We've got to stay away with it. We've got to stay science-based. And limiting this ju- uh, the sale of junk foods in school is important. It's not the only thing. We still have to have uh, comprehensive action by parents, by schools, by communities to help children understand and make healthy food choices. But getting uh, junk food out and, and physical education back in, and here's another statistic for you, Dimitri. Um, almost 80% of American high school seniors have no physical education on a daily basis. Yeah. And we know that they should have at least one hour. Are you guys working, I'll get you out of here on this, are you guys working uh, specifically on the federal and legislative levels, or are you guys looking for some allies when it comes to local school districts as well? We, we like to, we like to have all the allies we can. The main Absolutely. thing is, is to to get the point across that uh, we need to address this systematically and get the junk food out. So whether that's at the the local level or at the national level, it's terribly important, and it is a matter we want to make sure that our obesity crisis really does not become uh, a national security crisis. Retired Rear Admiral Jamie Barnett, you can uh, find out more about the study, uh, the original study, Too Fat to Fight, at missionreadiness.org, and Still Too Fat to Fight, that study will be released. Do you have a date on that being released uh, yet? Uh, It should be by the end of August, Ah, before school starts. Very good. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Dimitri.